The second point we want you to start thinking about is how much of Azure AD have I actually reviewed and potentially moved away from putting it diplomatically some of the questionable defaults that are in Azure AD. Like a lot of cloud platforms, you get Azure AD with your 365 license and it's kind of just sitting there wide open by default. So let's talk about some examples of that wide open by default nature. For brand new tenants, guests can invite other guests. So for example, I share a document with you and that provisions a guest account in Azure AD. Well, you as the guest can then go and invite another guest who can then go and invite another guest. And eventually I kind of started losing control over who did I actually want in my tenant and into my files in the first place. One of the other defaults that a lot of folks aren't aware about, Clue is kind of in the name, Azure Active Directory. Well, look, it's a directory, right? It's got all this database of user accounts, information groups. And again, by default, users, even if they're not admins, can visit the Azure AD portal and enumerate all this information. You can see all the groups, all the other users, et cetera, et cetera. And then lastly, and this is one that we're going to show you a little bit of demo of with regards to the type of threat that it can pose. By default, your users can hand over permissions to OAuth apps. So you may be familiar with this, where when you sign into an app, it may prompt you, do you want to sign in with Apple, with Facebook, with Twitter, and often Office 365 will be an option. For example, let's take a calendar app. I sign into a calendar app with my Office 365 account, I'm going to hand over permission to that app to read my calendar, right? But the apps go a little bit further than that. They could be looking at your files, they could be looking at your email, and all sorts of other stuff. And we're going to demonstrate what that looks like when it goes wrong and why you should pull back those permissions. Because of the nature of it, the stuff we're about to talk about, the licensing really it applies across all licenses. With your E5 level licenses, you will get some more benefits, particularly for that OAuth permission that I mentioned. And again, this is going to be high security stuff, right? You don't want your users handing over, uh, speaking plainly, these back doors to potential attackers. And for the most part, these questionable defaults that we're about to show, you know, unless you are an organization of massive scale, and you can probably do a lot of this with very low business impact. Okay, dokie. So you'll see on screen just now, this is Azure AD. This is a user consent settings page. That one that's highlighted down at the bottom, allow user consent for apps, that's going to be your default. That means that any user can consent to another app accessing the permissions that that user hands over. Worse still, if it's an admin that does that process, we're really delegating it for the whole tenant. So let's look at an example of how that might translate. So we're going to sign in just now uh, as our test user, Adele. So Adele's going to sign in and you'll see here, you'll probably be familiar with this. You may have seen this before. Uh, this is the permissions requested screen that will happen. So again, I go back to that example where I'm signing in to a calendar app. It's going to ask for me for permissions to read my calendar, right? In this particular demonstration, uh, you'll see that the app, number one, it's unverified but that maybe isn't entirely obvious to most users. It does give me a warning about risk, but it also calls the app MS Online 365. So an attacker can name their app. I don't want to say almost anything because there are certain banned terminologies you can't use, but you know, an attacker could call their app Microsoft Online 365. And then you'll see the number of permissions that are available and that that app is asking. And again, by default, that user can simply hit accept and boom, the attacker whose application is running gets all those permissions. So what does it look like for the attacker? Well, there's some open source proof of concept stuff out there that we can demonstrate. There's a great example called 365 Stealer. You'll see here we've got it running. It presents to me as the attacker a phishing link. All I have to do is hook my user to following that link. You'll see that it's a real MicrosoftOnline.com link because again, that app is hosted and leveraging Azure AD as its identity provider. And as the attacker, I can now see after I've handed over those permissions, I can start to see OneDrive files and I can then start to retrieve those as an example. Well, again, we'll look back at how kind of 
intuitive this is for an attacker and again how low cost this is because speaking frankly it's just on github i can go in and i can see attachments onedrive files i can get outlook information i could post a file to a victim's onedrive and that's got scary implications with regards to malware i can create outlook rules i can send mail from their mailbox i can enumerate all the users in the directory i can even go in and do a content search of victims emails and all of that happened just because my user handed over some consent permissions. So how do we change the dial on this, right? How do we tighten this up? Well, what you should be doing is you should be going into the Azure AD Admin Center and you should go into your user consent settings and we're not going to allow user consent. We're going to force it through an admin approval process. And hey, we can even say, you know what, for some low level permissions, we don't need an admin approval process. If you've got that E5 license, you can use Microsoft Defender for cloud apps. And that is going to let you see your existing OAuth app permissions that are out there. And it'll even give you an idea of community use. So that means we could say, well, let's take the high level of permissions combined with an app that is rarely seen. Maybe that's going to be suspicious and we should look into it. And again, there's an add-on license called App Governance. What that allows me to do is monitor OAuth apps over time. So for example, what happens if the supply chain of a no-auth app is compromised? Well, we might be able to tell that based on certain patterns, such as the increase of data usage by that application. So OAuth apps, and again, Azure AD defaults in general, are absolutely something you need to get on top of.